Hey, it's Norm from Tested.com. I'm down here in LA actually using Frank Ippolito's shop. I'm joined actually by a Tested fan and friend, Sean Harrington. Uh, you run a small production company, a fabrication Correct. company called First Stage Productions. Correct. And you reached out to us because you want to do something really cool. You make something that we are fascinated with, but I've never seen puppets. We're no bearing the lead here. You make puppets. I do. Like stage puppets. I do, particularly for shows like Avenue Q, uh, Little Shop of Horrors, those sorts of things. Wow, and you offered to make some puppets for us. I did, because uh, because I, I became a fan, became a premium member. Um, I love the podcast, I listened to it on the way to work, and I figured, hey, I've got some extra materials that are just dying to be used, so why not use them? How could we turn that down? So we're down here, and you have finished some of the puppets. Let's just show them right okay. now. Um, These are incredible. From, from the Blockheads, we've got Will. Oh my goodness. And we've got Norm, and we did a slight change. Your, your original Blockhead design, of course, has the uh, eye device, so we mm -hmm. decided to do something a little oh, more camera. indicative, All a little right. DSLR. A little update. Uh, so we've got Will, and then, of course, we've got Adam with his dynamite. Wow. Show, so. So, these puppets, they're not obviously the Avenue Q style puppets. You Correct. design them based on the blockheads of your design. Correct. And you use a lot of modern technology to design your puppets. I try to primarily because it's more exact in terms of how you can reproduce things. I knew I had to do at least four of these. I'm also working on Jamie's puppet. He's, he's in progress and we'll talk a little bit about that later. Um, but this is an early version of Will. We, you and I were talking about colors and what we should and shouldn't do. Yeah. Uh, trying to figure out a way to make it more comfortable in here for uh, the puppeteer's hands. So using uh, particularly laser technology, I use a combination of SketchUp and Visio and of course Illustrator to create uh, line art that can be used on foam. On foam. So this is reticulated foam. Uh, a lot of puppeteers will call this Scott foam. Um, it's a half inch reticulated foam that's about 25 to 30 pores per inch. And I just have a little stay tab in here. And so if we're going to take out the back panel, we just pop it out. As you're designing this, so I provided you with some reference files. And the designs that we have for the blockheads are basically what you see on, our, on, the, on the site and on the shirt. It's Correct. a 2D image representing a fake 3D cube. Right. Um, so in SketchUp, you modeled. Uh, what you what the depth and what you you brought it into a 3D exactly model. Um, the 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 people who designed it I went and actually reskewed the isometric images to be traditional flat face it mm. looked like something out of Peppa Curra, in fact and I knew that the material I was going to be using for the base was this half inch foam so I actually have half inch walls around it and I knew that for particular reasons I need to have the back plane be nice and solid I knew I was going to have a, a tension wire in here so that it wouldn't rip did it all in SketchUp posed them so that they would be about to scale. I had to make some modifications on the shirt here. Your your hair doesn't go all the way to the back, right. but I knew I wanted the back panel to be all one color, so we modified it in a couple of places. And, um, and then and put it all together. Yeah, right. So you have the walls, you have their basic, and you design in the puppetry where the hands Correct. would go. And, and then there's some rigid material. Correct. The um, the, when you have a mouth plate, you don't want it flopping around, and you don't want a material that's going to wear down from sweat. So um, I use Coroplast for those because it's a plastic material. It's the stuff you would see guys on the corner flipping signs around advertising it's apartments. It's sturdy. great, really easy to cut on the laser cutter. You get a little bit of scorching, but um, it's, it's pretty easy to use. But that's like a skeleton, that's a jaw. Exactly, that's the upper and lower plate. So the, so the puppeteer has a nice place to put his hands in. Then on the outside, we use Antron fleece, which is an anti-pill fleece. And it, it doesn't wear over time. It doesn't. It the up. nice part about this stuff is, is it, it's called anti peel because you can keep rubbing it forever. There's also a type of fleece called blizzard fleece that is flat. The problem is, is it doesn't hide seams really well. With this mm. stuff, you can pick it apart. I've got a tool that I made with a couple of straight pins that uh, does what's called picking the seams. Kind so you flock it. it. Right. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's really forgiving. It's, it's a great material. I actually designed this at full size and then scale it down to 98% because when you're stitching it together, you want the seams to pull together. So you, you, you shrink it down and then you stitch it together so it kind of pulls it in nice and tight and it's got oh. this fluffy feel to it. So let's look at version one because this okay. is like the skeleton for right. a head where you have the foam, the inside has your corrugated plastic, you've lined it with some comfortable hand line. Right, uh, you don't want the puppeteer's hand to be wearing against the foam because after about five minutes you'll have rash and it's just right. no fun. Okay, so this is this is the skeleton. All four of the blockheads have something similar to this. Exactly. And at this point, you can puppeteer it. You can, and when you design a puppet, you want the puppeteer to have as few, as little fatigue as possible. So you'd actually design the puppets with the mouth open, and you're pushing to close. You want the natural inclination of the puppet's mouth to be open. 
Um, so we went to that version and then we did this one and I found out that, gee, okay, well I don't really need all this area and this will give me a little more back strength so they, this isn't going to just fall off. So this is kind of the full version that we did of the puppet. What I noticed when I did the video of Will doing one of the 3D prints. Yes. Hey guys, it's Friday, which means it's time for another edition of Print the Mystery Object with the MakerBot. There was a point where I do the dance break and come in and out. Yeah. My hand was actually slipping out of the back of it. Oh. So I said, well, how do I resolve that? Well, on a couple of other puppets that I've done, I'll take these little two inch stress balls. Mm -hmm. Little foam balls. Exactly. Cut them in half and then put them in here so that the puppeteer's hands. It's a grip. Exactly. So they can puppet for hours and you actually move less when you had this, you can just do very, very simple type things, so. And then we corresponded to figure out the colors, because in the blockheads, you know, it's only one orange, and there's some there's shading like four colors there. maximum, yeah. right. But then it made more sense to, just, to sh add some different shading. Right. And then also I recommended adding, maybe changing the lip a little bit. Yeah, because it, look, it looks kind of weird to have these little pieces floating. It almost looks like lipstick. In fact, on, on yours, you can see you've got these pieces. Right. That would have looked really weird if we would have included it on yours, so we decided not to. Yep. Um, I believe also you have uh, more white legs that would have looked mm -hmm. kind of like you're going around pantsless, so we decided that probably wasn't the best idea, so we went with uh, a six color palette for you. Nice. Um, and then Adam also had the same color as Will in the original design, so we decided to kind of do a mix of his blonde and slightly graying yeah. hair, um, which I think works a little bit better, and we use a similar color with, with Jamie once he's done. Oh my goodness, they're amazing, and the accessories you designed, just with Velcro, we can, Will's coffee cup. Yeah, and, and we can make you know, coffee cups for everybody if we need to, to, to do a... So, uh, in terms of puppeteering, mm -hmm. what can you recommend for people who, like, if they buy a puppet, the actual act of puppeteering, what, what are some good practices? Um, well, I'd say the first thing is, is get a puppet, any puppet. Um, I like Muppet-style puppets, which a lot of people will call soft puppets. I like working in fleece and foam. Um, if you go to FAO Schwartz, they've got a great thing called the Muppet Whatnot Kit. It's about a hundred bucks. You can customize it to a certain degree. They're really good quality puppets to play with for considering the fact that they're about a hundred bucks. Um, and they're great for kids. You know, you can do all these crazy costumes and they're the classic choose the style nose you want and the color of the skin. Um, the next step up, there's a number of puppet sites on the web that particularly specialize on how to make Muppet-style puppets. Uh, there's a site that I went to several years ago that I haven't checked to see if it's up, and I believe it's called puppetproject.com. Um, they have whole kits where you can build kind of a base thing and then add whatever features you want mm. to, either the skinless or uh, just a pure foam thing, and you can you can dye the foam yourself if you want to. And even with the Muppet-based puppets, there are different styles in terms of how do you move the hands around? Correct. There are, there are three different base style of Muppets that you'll see out there. There's what's called a live hand puppet, which is where um, a puppeteer will put his hand in this one puppet with the, with the other hand, and then they'll have somebody come in behind them to do the other hand for gesturing. That's a live hand puppet. Um, Cookie Monster, um, Oscar, and uh, I believe Ernie is also like that. Then you've got a rod puppet. Um, a rod puppet typically will have two metal rods that will control one or two of the arms. And for a two rod puppet, it'll, it'll kind of be like chopsticks. You work them and they can gesture a little bit and turn a little bit. Uh, then you've got trigger puppets. Uh, that's more like beaker where you're really just kind of, the mouth isn't up where the hand is, you're actually moving it down there. The moving box puppets we did for Avenue Q were like that. Puppeteers would have two things and it just flops the mouth open. Got it. There's other styles, um, but that's basically the, the three different types of puppets that you'll see. Wow, it really is not only an engineering mm -hmm. design, it's an art form right. for the performance. And these are so amazing. I Thank agree. you so much, Sean. My pleasure. Not only for making these, but also for sharing your process. And we'll have all the files and images on our website. This is amazing. Thank you. So, Will, I'm Norm. That's Sean. Check out our YouTube channel in the link below. We'll see you guys next time.